I'm not sure how we're going to this. I'm not sure we're going to Special Ed advocate. 
If we have a second person joining, you gotta unmute you only have five for the state. Uh, you have to have five. Present, not just correct. Yeah. yeah, but I'm just, that was, okay. I was surprised that we only have. Yeah. I'll stand in for someone. Well, where we is have another person. <laughs> There's Nate. I thought you said Nate. Nate is supposed to be here. Nate is supposed to be here, yeah. He's coming yeah. to the middle school. Still, we have a second. Yeah. Well, yeah. technically, that you have a long phone. That door's open. No, that's no, that doesn't that's count. Present. It has to be physically present. present. Actually, that's just me. Yeah, right. He's right there. Ah, there he is. <laughs> this is Nate Erdman. He's for Gary Township. And when he comes, he forgets that he's at Nona Lemon. So he always has her. She's oh, so you're the guy I need to talk to about the position I just looked for? Him. Probably not. Right. <laughs> I appreciate everybody's um, willingness to be here at 545. This is a special meeting, so the, um, the agenda is a little different. And as I said earlier, we have a lot of people on vacation, so um, I'm going to be taking the notes that Pat does, but it's a relatively quick agenda. Um, before I have call to order, I would like to introduce um, Jack. Would you like to say a little bit? It's good to be here. Thank you. Uh, I don't know if you want any background. I don't know if you got my resume sent to you at all. But um, I had 36 years in education before I retired. The last year and a half were um, I was superintendent of Whitehall Coffee School District. Yes, Saquon Barkley. Yeah, I know, I saw that. <laughs> uh, uh, I was a superintendent there for 11 and a half years. I retired. Uh, Ten months later, I went back to the Northern Lehigh School District, also in Lehigh County, and did an interim superintendency there while they did a search for the superintendent and, ironically, the same year, the assistant superintendent. We were very, very fortunate to get two very, very quality people. Um, took our time, did it right, uh, vetted, all those types of things, and got two great people. I retired once again, and this past February, I went back to the Northwestern School District in Lehigh County as their assistant superintendent for four months. So it's not a bad gig. Uh, you know, six, eight months off, a couple months on, and stayed in the game. So uh, I was contacted by Flip and Jeff Sultanic. I don't know if you know Jeff. Jeff is the solicitor for the IU. Jeff was my solicitor for 11 and a half years and asked if I would be willing, and uh, things seemed right. So um, good to be. Um, roll call, we have Amy Nate, John, Rachel Sakelic, and Glenn present. Director Murray is on the phone. Um, absent this evening is Director Klein and Dr. Bucks. Um, the announcement, the special meeting has been called to elect and appoint Jack Corby as interim superintendent and to approve the supporting contractual agreement, which is right here, for the start of 2019-20 school year. Rachel England is now present. Director England, um, would you like to move Moving on to the reading of notice of the meeting. Do I have a motion to appoint Jack Corby as interim superintendent and to approve the supporting contractual agreement that has been sent to you all for the start of 2019-20 school year? Yep. That's a lot faster. I have to take this out. She's obviously inside. <laughs> <laughs> This is a unanimous roll call vote. Your vote will be recorded in the affirmative unless I hear a nay or an I abstain. Motion carries. Um, oh my goodness, I forgot to have public input. I'm sorry. Um, public, public input. Uh, any input from the public? Come on, man. What's no fine. <laughs> uh, agreement is right here. How are you spelling here? Uh, $600 a day. Oh, he needs um, <laughs> Seriously. And it's Jack, J-A-C-K. Oh, John, sorry. It's technically John, but you go by Jack. You got it. Okay. 
Really? Oh yeah, that's typical. That's a, that's a traditional. And Corby, C O R B Y. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, a lot of John. I thought JFK was. How are you reading the budget? We just jumped up to outline real quick. I mean. Just, I just, I just, yeah. <laughs> How are you at rating in budgets? Because they're a million dollars short on the budget they approved. Well, apparently they need to use the fund balance. The fund balance the budget. The fund balance keeps going down. If they, they had told us last year if they didn't correct it in three years, it'd be negative a million. Well, with a fund balance, if you continue to use recurring costs, that will happen. But if you use fund balance to offset school buses where you don't have to buy them every year or those types of things, then it might not go down every every year. So it all depends. I would have to look at what is that fund balance being used for, recurring costs or, or not. What we'd like to see is actually a budget that's balanced, that is the expenses are not more than the um, income coming in. Not being a smart aleck, but everybody would. And, and, that, and that is the goal. Uh, but sometimes, unfortunately, taxes have to be raised. When I was at Whitehall, to be very, very honest with you, I did uh, 12 or 13 budgets and we raised taxes every year. But we only raised taxes maybe a half a mil to the tune of like $30, $40 per, um, per average taxpayer. That thirty forty dollars is a lot easier to take than a hit of a couple hundred dollars. And people don't realize when that thirty dollars is there, that may raise. Now I had a great tax base. I had the Lehigh Valley malls and all those types of things. So if that thirty dollars means three, well, a minimum million dollars to me, that million is there this year, that million is there next year, and that million is there forever going out. So it, it it's. It's something you have to focus on. And budgets aren't, you know, everybody thinks on June 30th you pass the budget. Done and said until next December, January, or whatever you No, it's an, a budget is an ongoing thing because just because you put away money, I always told our C and I people one of the biggest expenses in textbooks is shipping and handling. You might get hit 15% on shipping and handling, and you when you approve textbooks, you know what they cost. They're big money, and now I have 15% to that. Negotiate, negotiate, negotiate. Go into, um, I just saw today, the state is going to, and I don't know if you applied for the safety and security grant yes. with the state. They just approved $60 million again a second year. That is a huge uh, benefit. So you got to go after grants. You got to go. You know, you, you got to pay. You got to pay attention. Just because a budget is passed in January or June, I'm sorry, June 30th, doesn't say that you slap it aside and you just continue to spend that money in that line item. You, you watch those. And hopefully, at the end of the year, you have a uh, surplus that you can put in your fund balance, whether it's restricted or unrestricted areas. What about um, leadership and accountability um, for you and your staff, the, the people that would report to you? I have a simple philosophy. You have a job to do, you have a responsibility to do. Do it, do it well, and in the meantime while you're doing it, be professional and be respectful. Of and all parties? Of and all if they parties, are? Everyone, everyone. And I mean, I don't care who it is. Uh, I, I never tolerated the uh, uh, staff in classrooms with kids and that type of thing. Um, it, it's a two-way street. It's respect, absolutely, uh, of all parties. Um, and I have to set that tone, too. Um, well, we, we need that tone set. We need it. And if you've read any of the articles that have been about the school for the last year or so, you'll, you'll understand some of what you're walking into. We need leadership to come in, hold people accountable, and set a <coughs> new culture that will be a strong, this is the right way of doing things, as we proceed. I, I read them. Uh, to be perfectly honest with you, I know there's probably a lot of truth to them. I don't know if it's the total truth, because I've been involved in education for 36 years. A lot of years as a superintendent, and sometimes I go home and read a newspaper.
newspaper article the next day and see was I at that same meeting. It happens, you know, but uh, if it's there, if there's part of the door, it could. And, uh, I, I, I cannot tolerate unprofessionalism. We are in public education. We are accountable to, I am accountable, everyone's accountable to the board, but we're also accountable to the taxpayers and, and really also parents. Kids are our clientele. I don't. And maybe some people don't like that. But without them, we don't have. And we don't have an organization. Uh, my door is always, always open to everybody. I tell people that you might not get, you might not hear what you want to hear. But I will listen. I will listen. I and I, and I will consider. That's the best. I, I, um, the door is always open to anybody and everybody. So there's a, so accountability is. We're all accountable. You're accountable as a board. We're accountable to you. What about technology? What about? In this school district, technology has overrun this district. Um, there's a lot of things that could be um, used in a traditional sense that I think that we're getting away from. Um, for instance, these kids are literally addicted to technology. <laughs> Speaking of technology, right? <laughs> um, we just we have a lot of kids who are addicted to the technology, signing in and out with technology. I understand what you're looking for. I understand why we're doing it. But there's got to be better ways and out-of-the-box pieces to look at because if we're asking students to be respectful and to be in a classroom to learn, but they are having to take out a phone or take out a computer and sign out, we're now disrupting the entire school classroom. Um, and they're walking around with these things, taking them to the bathroom, and it causes massive issues within the hallways. Um, fights and people recording stuff like it becomes very cumbersome because these kids are literally 24 7 on something constantly and like you probably heard me say to Amy when we came in my kids everybody in this district has a has a tablet a Chromebook a something that's given to them by the district this year they rolled out. Have you went to one? One to one. One to one. We've been to one to one. We've been to one to one for a long time. My first grader has an iPad. They, they rolled out something that I think is probably good for, for some folks to be able to go additionally on to the educational piece through the summer to help with that. And I agree that there is some of that that could happen. However, when you have these kids who are completely on their devices and are completely shutting down and going into their own little caves and are being on technology, um, my kids have all been removed from that because they need time to be a kid, to learn to socialize because those things are not being taught. I hesitate to comment on policy. I have to look at your policy. I have to look at what is going on. I could answer questions in my philosophy on the budget. Well, that's what I'm asking. What is important? I, I could, Technology I, in the school. For you, is it something that needs to be like vast and huge? Is it something that should be a part of? Is it, does it need to be encompassed? Like it, what? It, it definitely has to be part of. I, I mean, agree. Which we sit here and like I just got done saying uh, with a uh, ordering textbooks. If someone does not order resources along with it for virtual and those types of things, you're missing out. Mm -hmm. So those types of things are very important. Um, my son graduated, he was a junior at Parkland, now, or at uh, Syracuse, but he went to Parkland. They, they were able to bring their phones and use them as part of the curriculum every day and those types of things. So I, I hesitate to sit here and say I'm against this or against that unless I see exactly they are using it for and in what. But no, the kid shouldn't be walking down the hall or, or sitting during a class period and be um, Twittering and Facebooking and that kind of thing. No, that that's 
should be happening, but they can be used as part of the curriculum, and I support that. Okay. Um, if there is anything else, um, I want to thank you for asking direct questions. Since it was a small group, I, I know that wasn't part of actually our vote, but I think it was good for you to be able to talk to Jack and um, get to get to know Mr. Corby and some of his philosophy, and we'll have plenty of time to get to know philosophy and, and talk about those issues. Um, is there anything else from the board? Okay, if not, then uh, meeting is adjourned. Um, you can sit in the fridge. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> we did vote, yeah. We did. Now we have a and then Stacy, are you still there? Yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. With two others. Okay. And then um, <laughs> we are going to transition to our exec session now for um, the superintendent search. Um, the meeting was previously announced with the, um, the calendar of events. So this is our interview search from 6 to 8 o'clock in the middle school conference room. Um, to review applicants and make decisions for interviews. Yes. I'm here. Hi, Dr. Box. <laughs>